So, Grover, you're obviously now into pre-election mode, which I'm, I would imagine means you're going to be even more aggressive about this than normal, right? Sure, if you want. <laughs> let's, let's be serious for a moment. I want you to, I, this will be, you'll enjoy this. I want you to treat me like a complete simpleton. I want you to tell me in very easy to understand words and phrases the difference between the Ryan budget plan and the one that Romney would like to bring in. Okay. Well, there's the Ryan budget that has actually been written down, scored by CBO, passed by the uh, Republican House and got most of the Republican votes in the Senate, which gives you a very good outline of, of where Republican thinking is. It takes uh, the Clinton approach towards welfare reform, uh, which was passed in 96, and extends it to the various means-tested other welfare programs like Medicaid and food stamps uh, and, and programs like that. Then it takes Medicare and takes the bipartisan approach that he worked out uh, with Wyden uh, and uh, moves that so that not, nothing changes for anybody over the age of 55. <clears throat> but if you're under 55, Medicare falls apart before you get there unless it's reformed as Ryan does it. And then on tax reform, he takes uh, corporate and individual rates to 25 percent, broadens the base for revenue t neutral tax reform, goes to a territorial tax system. That's the Ryan plan. Our, uh, what Romney does is takes a 20 percent across the board cut in all income tax rates, looks to broaden the base, uh, and on taxes and spending, moves in the direct and, and puts in, uh, reduces total government spending down to 20 percent from the 24 percent that uh, Obama took it up to over the next 10 years. So, Michael Linden, from your point of view, where is the best attack line for the Democrats? Well, the best attack line for the Democrats is just looking at the details of the plan. I mean, Grover did a nice gloss on the Ryan and the Romney plan. What he neglected to say is that Ryan and Romney have so far refused to explain how they're going to pay for the five trillion dollars in tax cuts they promised uh... the wealthy over the next ten years now there's two ways they can pay for that they can either raise taxes on the middle class or they can pay for it with more debt that's pretty much the only way to do it now that's partly why they haven't explained how they're going to pay for it because that's not exactly popular okay grow, grow them. i saw you grimacing away there as <laughs> i would have expected but, but uh, answer me this i don't hear tens of millions of Americans running around screaming, you know what, we've got to have tax cuts for the wealthy. What I hear are tens of millions of Americans who are deeply hurting in this financial crisis still. Yeah. They're unemployed or they've lost their homes, whatever it may be. The one thing they're not doing is demanding more tax cuts for the rich. And that's where I just can't see this argument resonating with the core voter. What, what do you do about that? Well, there are two things. First of all, you look at where we are. We've added, we, Obama's added $5 trillion to the national debt. Uh, we have more people unemployed than when he took office. This is the weakest recovery uh, since the 1930s. Uh, if Reagan was president, GDP, if we'd had Reagan-style recovery, GDP would be 10% higher, and we'd have about 10 million more people working than you, we you know do what, now. Pierce, so Pierce, you I just have to point jump in. To one second. No, you don't. Uh, what yeah, we, I do. What, what I, the Bush weakest is... recovery in history was under George W. Bush. I just want to, I, that's really important. You know, you like to pretend that under Obama things have been terrible, but, and, and certainly we could be doing better, but we've created four and a half million new jobs, private sector jobs, since the recession was over. And under George W. Bush, at this point in his presidency, he was still down private sector jobs. So that was the weakest recovery. And we did try your approach, Grover. We said, yeah. let's cut taxes for the rich. And what did we get for it? Nothing. Okay. More deficits. Okay. Nice try, but here's the challenge. Obama's been president for three and a half years. Any reform he wanted to enact, he had two years with the Democratic Congress. If he wanted to make uh, tax cuts for lower income people permanent, he could have done it at any time. He chose not to. Uh, what Obama's done is not only put forward a situation where he doesn't have any plan at all. One of the ch when Democrats That's come out just and say, he, we're he so has pleased. a budget, Grover. He has a 400-page budget. Uh, it, the, the, one, the, the one that every no, single Democrat no in the House and Senate voted against, the one that every single Democrat in the House and Senate, that plan, that's the budget, trillion-dollar deficits as far as the eye can see, more spending and no recovery. I mean, that's, it's, if that's his just, plan, I mean, I, I, he's in big trouble. His, 
that's not at all. I mean, I understand that's not how you want to characterize it. No, because his plan was never put up for a vote. It was a GOP written caricature of his van plan that was put up for a vote. Listen, Can the we vote on his plan, plan tomorrow the, in the, the House the and Senate? Grover, that would be Grover, nice. The, the president's plan would stabilize debt. Uh, before the end of the decade, look, here's the, here's the main difference oh, between the president's plan and the Ryan plan. The president's plan asks people who can afford it to pay a little more, to help pay down the debt, to help stabilize the debt. The Ryan plan asks those people to take more tax cuts. Here, have yep. more tax cuts, and please create some jobs for us. It, okay. it doesn't be honest just a one failed, I, I'm going to wrap it up. Grover, uh, yeah. out of the kindness of my heart, you can have 10 seconds <laughs> to finish this okay. off. What do you want to say? What Obama did is he's just changed the rules. His, use, his old argument was no tax increases on anyone who earned less than 250000 He changed that on August 8th. No income tax increases on anyone who earns less than 250000 for the next 12 months. It's open season on the American people one year into the next presidency. That's Obama's own words on taxes. I, I really enjoyed that chat, so please come back again. And let's do it again, because we're going to have a lot more debate about this. We know the battleground is going to be the economy, taxation, exactly up your alley, Grover, and also yours, Michael.